day, my friend. It is Wednesday. It is hump day. And it's a holiday week. Some of us are working, like myself. But some of us have had the opportunity to take some time off for well-deserved rest and relaxation. And the key to this series, if you've been following me over the past month, we started last month in reviewing the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And if you've never been exposed to it before, again, I highly recommend it. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. But if you have been through it, it's always a good refresher to prepare ourselves for the next year so that we start the year off firing on all cylinders. Now, we covered the first part of the maturity model as up here. The first part of the maturity model was the first three habits. The first one was be proactive. Then we talked about begin with the end in mind and then put first things first. Stephen Covey referred to this area of the maturity model as the private victory, our ability to master ourselves so that we can set a foundation to pursue the next level of maturity. Now, at this area of the maturity model up here, we moved from being dependent upon others to becoming independent. This next part of the model will take us from being independent to interdependent, where we become more collaborative in our relationships, more involved. What this means is the first of this level of maturity, but the fourth habit is think win-win. Now, I know that we are all probably familiar with the concept of a win-win, but how do we approach it in practice? It's difficult sometimes to transfer that concept of win-win into a practice of win-win. To fully understand in our personal relationships and our career, how do we behave in a way where we have mutual benefit in mind. The only way that we can get from this is from the concept of abundance, an abundance mindset, meaning that there is plenty out there for us to live and thrive in what we do in all of our relationships, again, both personal and professional. But oftentimes, because of scripting, what do I mean by scripting? From the time we were born <laughs> to this moment, we have always been maybe compared to somebody else. Why can't you get A's like so-and-so? You don't get all A's. Or it could be, you know, in sports, perfect example. How, can't, how come you can't be the, as good as that person? And those comparisons build within us this concept of win-lose. In order for me to win, I fundamentally believe that I have to make you lose. That's a scarcity mentality. How do we create a win-win behavior in our own life? Through collaboration, through working with people, through identifying what they need and establishing what we need and working both, working hard to ensure that both needs are met. That's true win-win. Not with the intent of, you know, getting something, but the intent of the giving of something. And how well I give what information or knowledge I have to you, you try to match in giving it back to me, what I need. How do you think it would be <laughs> if you monetized that information with your spouse or significant other or a child or a grandchild. Say, hey, look, you know, I'll give you unconditional love, but there's one condition. <laughs> You're going to have to pay me for it. That wouldn't go over too well, would it? No. 
So we've got to find ways within our relationships to break the dichotomy of win, lose, tough, soft, um, strong, weak. These are all dichotomies that create separation between people, not community. In community, we all come together. It's kind of like the story of the stone soup where the person goes to, you know, the village and says, you know, I'm hungry. And everybody says, well, we don't have anything to spare. We can't help you. And so he sets up a pot and he's boiling water in this clearing and he's putting stones in, in there. And people walk by and they're like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making stone soup. Really? Stone soup? Oh, I've never had stone soup before. Yeah. Um, I'll let you have some, but you have to contribute something. And the person says, well, I've got, I've got carrots I could bring. That'd be great. Bring your carrots and I'll share my stone soup with you. So the person brings the carrots and he puts it in the pot. Somebody else comes by. What are you guys doing? Well, we're making stone soup. Oh, I'd like to try that. Well, if you want some, you have to contribute some type of an ingredient. Well, I've got, I've got some cabbage. I could put, we could put cabbage in the stone soup. Before you know it, multiple people have joined the group and they have an amazing vegetable soup. Nobody ate the stone, by the way. But we don't operate this way anymore. You know, with, with social media and, and people representing themselves as having these you know, outlandish lifestyles and, being on yachts and flying in personal jets. And, you know, that's all great. That's fine. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be happy. But it does make other people who have less or at least don't see their own abundance feel like they're winning. When in fact, winning doesn't always mean riches in, you know, monetary or things. True richness comes from the value of our relationships. And in order to create value in relationships, we have to bring value to relationships. So habit four, think win-win, comes from a mindset of abundance, not scarcity. There's enough for all of us. Let's help each other access what it is that we need to be successful. It can happen. So habit four means that we have to tap into our ability to be creative, resourceful, have some ingenuity. It's not simple or straightforward, but it's the willingness to explore possibilities with another human being or a group of people to create synergy, to create something greater than any one of us could have accomplished alone. That's where real innovation comes from. When we tap into the creativity and the talents and the knowledge of the people around us to create something that we can all benefit from. Think win-win takes work. It's not intuitive. It's not the social concept, but it needs to be because we can all benefit from habit for think win-win. Now, in the <clears throat> public victory of the model up here, we start with think win-win. And then the next habit is first, seek to understand before being understood. So if we want to create this win-win relationship, then we need to find out and ask what it is people need, what they're looking for, what do they want to accomplish, and listen with the intent 
to understand, period. Not to judge, not to debate, not to question, unless you're looking for more clarity. But we're listening with the intent to understand. That's the fifth habit. And then the sixth habit is synergize. Working collaboratively with each other. Creativity, innovation, mind think. All these things are shared between you and this individual or you and this group. That's what masterminding groups were all about when they started. So that we could all walk away with something more than we came in to contribute. We benefit. Others benefit from our knowledge and we benefit from their knowledge and everybody wins. And it's not about monetization. I know, crazy, right? But Monday Morning Cup of Joe, after the coffee, never been monetized. Why? Because there's so much that we need to learn that we did not learn or were not taught in school. All these skills that are shared on Monday Morning Cup of Joe and after the coffee were not topics, were not school classes available. And that's why it's so important because these are very important in order for us to gain perspective and be successful in our lives. And that's what habit four begins with win-win. Seek to enrich the people around you as well as seeking to become enriched yourself. Now, this takes a very specific skill. It's courage and consideration. Look, setting up a win-win agreement takes courage. You're willing to contribute with the expectation or the trust that the other person will also contribute inequality. They'll contribute equal value to you. And if they're missing the mark, you have the opportunity to try to correct their course. And you can do the same with them. Ask them more questions. Share with them things that you think might be helpful for them. We all need to learn what we learned at the sand pile in kindergarten. Sharing is important for community. Sharing without an expectation is what enriches our relationships with each other. So important, but it is so challenging and so difficult because we have been programmed to a scarcity mindset. Well, I'm not going to give you that. I had to pay for that. You're going to have to pay me for it. There's some balance here. Look, you have room to be able to make a living. It's, it's fair. It's honest. But we also have a responsibility to share information, knowledge, experience, value. Look, sometimes there's a win-win or as Stephen Covey would put it, you have the option of win-win or no deal. Meaning, look, if we can't find equity together, then we agree to disagree agreeably in a friendly way. Look, if we're not getting anywhere, uh, we're not finding that mutual benefit. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe next time. Maybe on another topic or another way. And be friendly about it. And then, you know, move on. End the conversation. And then you might come up with something that, you know, in your mind, oh, wait, this would be equitable. Let me talk to so-and-so and say, hey, I, you know, I found something that I think might be of value to you. I do this all the time. If I run across an article and I know that friend of mine has an interest in it or you know somebody that I know has an interest in it I'll send it to him hey I was thinking about you the other day remember you were talking about XYZ I found this article thought you might benefit from it boom send it off do I expect anything for it no it's just showing people 
A, I was thinking about them, and B, I was willing to share freely some equity with them. Oftentimes, these build foundations of trust, not with the intent to manipulate, not with the intent that you're going to get something in return, but to build a foundation of a relationship is about trust. And when you make these emotional deposits in other people, then they want to collaborate with you. They will work harder to make sure that you get your win as much as they get their own. This is a skill that is not practiced often enough in our, our society, in business today, in even personal relationships. But when practiced, it will bring us closer to the public victory. Abundance does exist. But it takes integrity, being able to integrate our principles and our values is integrity. It takes character. It takes strong will and conviction to practice these seven habits. And this fourth habit, think win-win, most of all, I think. And we have to truly establish an abundance mindset. If we do not believe in true abundance, then we will always be looking for the manipulation. We manipulate people. FOMO, right? Oh, it's only going to be only available in the next five minutes. You better go for it now, or you're going to move. You're going to miss out. That's manipulation. For this time, we're going to sell it at this price only, and it's been dramatically reduced. It spurs people to action, but it is also manipulation. And People promise things, overpromise, and or deliver. Their intent was merely to make the sale and not to develop a relationship, a true, honest relationship. It's a manipulation. So in the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen mentions within the win-win habit chapter, the four dimensions of the win-win mentality. The first dimension is character. Building strength of character that you will stand by your principles and you will not capitulate or horse trade in your relationships. Number two, understand that your success in life is about relationships and the quality of those relationships. The sincerity and the trust and the emotional deposits that you make in those relationships, not with the intent of getting something in return, but because it is who you are and that is what character is. The third is agreements. If you're gonna put win-win into practice, you have to learn how you create that dialogue around an agreement. What do we want to accomplish? What do you need? Tell me what you need so that I understand. I will listen with the intent to understand. I will share with you what I need and you will listen to me with the intent to understand. And then we will agree on what we can do for each other in order to reach a win-win agreement, right? We have to set up systems and processes to really put the habit, think win-win, into practice. Make it practical application. This is what makes thinking win-win work. So, with that being said, now look, I don't cover everything. I'm not giving the training. Even though I'm a certified Franklin Covey Seven Habits trainer, I'm not online to give you training, but I am uh, here to whet your appetite and to tell you personally that the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey made a huge impact on my life. I, it boosted my career and my relationships personally exponentially. I don't get paid by Franklin Covey. 
but sometimes I, I take the Mercedes Benz approach to things. There's some information that is too important not to share. And this is one of the books that had a huge impact on my life, both personally and professionally. And I want to share it with you because we're starting a new year and it's a perfect time for us to gain important mindsets and following these seven habits so that we can make next year the best year, not just for ourselves, but for those who are around us. And so that sounds like a close to me. I hope you're having an enjoyable week. I look so forward to seeing you next year. And in the meantime, as always, in your personal life and your professional life, lead well, my friend. Mm -hmm.